So we're gonna go up to about 45 miles an hour. And you can kind of feel that pull, but you notice that the noise just isn't there. And as we round the bend, we'll go over into the slalom, and the slalom's to demonstrate maneuverability. So we will be going back and forth throughout the cone setup. Uh, give you an idea, the low, center of gravity, the weight that's in the battery, uh, offers us exceptional handling. If anything, I would say that's one of the, the the best points of the endurance truck is that you really can't lose control like in any typical driving scenario. <laughs> Sam, what are your first thoughts? Well, they told me it was the same hub motor that's used in the endurance pickup. Yeah. So I, I was impressed that it that it, that it sustained that durability. That it was that durable. Um, I mean, we were going. It was you know we were going up and down. We were going round and round. Um, it would be interesting to see if it, what it would do over 100,000 miles. I mean, I went around the block once. Is really all we did. I mean, for my little short stint in it, I mean, it was impressive, yes. We purchased this facility from General Motors for $20 million. The property is close to 1,000 acres, just over 6 million square feet under roof, which includes the stamping and body shop, the paint shop, which we are going to see next, and the General Assembly building. It's very simple, and then we're going to take this sheet of flat steel, and we're going to form a part in a press. They're going to put it up in the die here, they're going to roll the press over and the die will let you it'll hold the panel and stretch it and form a panel in the press. The panel we're forming today is actually this cab back from our endurance pickup truck. The cab back is actually the panel. If you look at a cab, the cab, cab of our endurance truck where the rear window is, this panel is actually welded in the truck right below that rear window. So that's why we call it a cab back. This panel, it's on the rack right here is actually the first panel we hit off of this die in this press for this uh, for our truck. So they're going to get that press started in a minute. Um, that's the finished panel picture there. Once we finish hitting this panel, we take it out. We'll actually send it over to our trimming operation, and when it's done being trimmed, and we'll package it up. It'll go to the body shop for welding into the the part uh, into the cab. Now it's very simple. We're actually running this press very slow so you can get the full effect. It can actually run a lot faster. Yes, these presses were here from when General Motors was here. Um, this press and the two sister presses behind it, when they were put in, was about $24 million. And an individual press line to try to replace that would be about $31 million. And General Motors left the entire press room. We, we had very little investment to have to get it up and run, and we're ready to run. All the computers are up and ready to run. So we've recommissioned everything. All the cranes have been safety checked and everything. So we're ready to turn the whole shop back on. Actually, almost 4,500 belts are on this truck body. In addition to the structural adhesive, so this is a strong, tough body. And it's got to be it's the first full-size all-electric work truck in the industry. And it is well built. So after we leave this welding area, the body will then go over to roof install, or we'll our laser brace area. And you'll see the video sped up a little bit. So we install the roof, weld the roof front and back, and then it goes into a laser booth, and that the laser actually melts silk and bronze wire into the roof, into the roof ditch area, and, and forms a structural bar. I worked for General Motors before I joined the LMC team and I was here for approximately 12 years before General Motors decided to close the plant. 
My last assignment with General Motors was to assist with the closing down, decommissioning of this plant. Super happy to be part of the LMC team here responsible for reopening it. On my team in General Assembly, I have over 40 team members, team leaders, engineers, and supervisors. We are starting to recommission the lines. We uh, have no, see no issues with being ready for SOP here in September. We build our trim shop on a skillet line. The skillet line is very important to us because it is extremely flexible in both volume and in uh, the multiple models that we can put on that line. We were very quickly able to convert from what was built here before cruise into the cab that you see on the line right now. We can build a van on this line, we can build a delivery style van on this line, we can build a cab, a truck cab, we can build a passenger style vehicle, all with the setup that we have right now.